In this video, I wanted to compare and contrast AR1 series which are stationary with those that are non-stationary. So on the left hand side here, we're going to be considering an AR1 process which has xt is equal to rho times xt minus 1 plus some error term et, where we're defining this rho to have a modulus which is less than 1. And actually in both of these examples, we're going to define et to be iid with a mean of zero and a variance of sigma squared. So that's the left-hand series. The right-hand series is going to be a non-stationary AR1 process. So we're going to have xt is equal to xt minus one plus our error term. So how do these two series actually look differently when we graph our xt across time? So in both of these examples, I'm going to imagine that zero is somewhere like this. So you just imagine the zero line running across here. And let's start off by drawing our stationary one. Well, when you have a stationary time series and you graph it for any sort of length of time, it looks something pretty much like random noise. There are no substantial positive runs and negative runs of xt. It always returns to zero relatively quickly. That's if we were, let's say, considering for this first graph that I've drawn, perhaps rho equals uh, 0.7 or something like that. As I increase rho, the behavior starts to change a little bit. So let's say I was drawing a graph for rho equals 0.95. If you draw it then, then you start to see that the series, even though it sort of still returns to zero quite regularly, there are these sort of runs of positive and negative xt, which happened across time. So that's perhaps rho equals 0.95. And as you get more and more, you can imagine that these runs get more and more pronounced, but the behavior of the series is basically the same. The, the series still acts to return to zero. But when you cross over the threshold and you let rho equal one, as we're going to in this right-hand side graph here, because we're implicitly setting rho equal to one there, the behavior of the series changes qualitatively. And it will actually look quite different depending on individual runs of this particular series. So one particular series might look something like this. Yeah, so you're getting a long run of negative values of xt. Another series might look slightly different. So for another series, perhaps the series goes up and then it comes down through zero and then it might go up and then continue onwards upwards. That's another example of an AR1 process with rho equal to one. But notice that the behavior is qualitatively different to that which I've drawn on the left-hand side here. On the left-hand side, we're having this frequent returning to zero, whereas on the right-hand side, we're getting these very, very long, almost infinitely long runs in some cases of xt, which we're not necessarily returning to xt in any finite amount of time. Although in theory, for a random process like this, it should return through zero at some point in the future. So what is the source of this qualitative difference in the behavior? Well, the way to look at it is that even though these series both have unconditional means, which are zero, the difference lies in the conditional means. So if we think about the expectation of our value of our series, xt, given that we have the value of xt in this period, which we're talking about the t minus one period, then we can work this out quite easily. This is just gonna be equal to rho times xt minus one, because the expectation of this term here is gonna be zero at time t minus one, and we already have this particular term at t minus one, so it's just uh, something which is already known to us. And notice that because rho is less than one, or is less in magnitude than one, then if the series is above zero, there is gonna be some downward pressure on the series towards zero. Whereas if the series is below zero, there is gonna be some upward pressure to back towards zero as well. So that's the kind of source as to why our series keeps returning time and time again past the zero mark. Contrast this with the right-hand side. If we now take the expectation of xt given xt minus one, then it's just equal to xt minus one, just through similar logic. And notice that because of the fact we don't have this row here, 
there is no downward pressure on the series back towards zero. Essentially, each new step which the series takes, it kind of you could kind of think about that as being the new zero of the series. It has no particular bias towards zero. There's no particular force which is driving the series to have either an upward pressure when it's below zero or a downward pressure when it is above zero. So there's no sort of returning force in the circumstance where we have a non-stationary AR1 process. But don't take my word for it, I want to now run some simulations in MATLAB to demonstrate that what I'm telling you isn't just complete rubbish. Okay, so I'm gonna run some simulations in MATLAB and we're gonna run 10,000 time steps for our two types of series. First of all, we're gonna start with a value of rho, which is around 0.8. Let's see how it looks. So as you can see here, the series is frequently going back and crossing zero. And even if I zoom into the series, there aren't really these long runs of positive or negative values unless I get really, really close to it. So our series, when we look upon it from the sort of distance of 10,000 time periods, looks like it's crossing zero frequently. Let's now increase row a little bit. So let's increase row to 0.95. If we do so, you can see now that we're not crossing zero half as frequently as we were before. And actually, if we zoom into the series here, we can actually start to see quite quickly that we're getting these long runs of positive and negative values of xt. Okay, let's increase row a little bit more. Let's increase it to 0.99 and rerun the program. And now you're quite conspicuously seeing these long runs of xt where we're going negative and positive. I don't even need to zoom in here. And if we go up to 0.999, then they're gonna get even more pronounced. Okay, so let's now actually let row equal one. So we're now setting our time series to be a non-stationary AR1 process. If I do that, you can see that we're getting these long, long runs of xt which are negative, and then here it's actually returning back towards zero. If I run it again, we're getting another really, really long pronounced run of our series away from zero. Actually, as it turns out, it's positive now. If I run it again, yeah, this is what I was trying to show. We're now getting a series which in the time periods which we've actually run it, it doesn't look like it's returning towards zero anytime soon. So there is a very obvious qualitative difference between AR1 processes which are stationary and those which are non-stationary. 